So as I color this, I want to do both sides. So I'm going to color one side first, then I'm going to flip it over and paint the whole thing. And I'm going to do these kind of, I don't want to do strokes the whole way. I do them kind of part way so it has different tones, dark black, dark light, orange. But I am going to try to coat the whole thing all the way out to the edges because the bug in nature has you know, a darker, lighter, and the thing's not solid black. I don't use black foam, so it needs to be like a dirty, dusty, kind of blackish orange. Uh, if you've ever looked at these bugs in real life, they're not black, they're not brown, they're not, they are a mix of orange. So that's kind of what my coloring is going to look like right there. Then once I get it colored up, I want to cut this thing into strips of foam that are about three millimeters wide. Um, and I'm just gonna use my normal scissors or a razor blade to either eyeball it or cut it, but I wanna do this really nice. Doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Close enough is good enough. And I'm just gonna start cutting it into strips. And I need, I don't need, but I like both sides to be uh, that color so I don't have to specifically tie it in dark side up or down I can just tie it in and go and not really worry about it and I like to have the orange edge so that when I'm actually tying the fly the, fl the fly will be variegated and you'll have a dirty black strip and then an orange strip so it'll look like it has the ribbing just like the uh, fly does and so I'm just going to keep cutting these until I feel like I have a nice pile so something like that and this is going to be the strip that I use, and it's going to be, you know, like I said, it's about three millimeters wide. So a major part of making all these flies come together is prepping your material ahead of time. So this is the, the calf tail. And if you were to start trying to tie with the calf tail where you had to cut the fur, uh, your chunk out from the middle, you'd notice that you'd have a really hard time digging it out and getting the tips evened. So what I do is I find where I feel like the usable material starts and ends. This one has good fur all the way down to the bottom, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take somewhere right in here, and I'm just gonna take the serrated edge of my knife and cut this. You can use a saw or if you have aviation snips or whatever, that works really good too. And I'm just gonna cut that tail off so that now when I get to my first fly that I'm gonna tie, I'm just gonna be able to pull up the perfect amount of material, even up the ends and just make my trim and not have to fight my way through the bad fur that I'm not going to use. And so that's basically what I do every time I start tying these flies uh, at the beginning of the season. So I have just the maximum amount of usable uh, fur and it makes my fly tying uh, of the miffer go a lot faster. So this is going to be how to tie the miffer which is Nick's favorite salmon fly pattern, and mine. And so basically you're gonna start by laying down a base of thread, popping that off. And as I'm laying the thread down, I'm gonna go all the way around to the bend and leave kind of a solid orange butt. and just wrap edge to edge till I get into the spot like that. I'm gonna take my long ginger saddle hackle. I'm going to comb back some fiber so I have a good tie-in point. I'm gonna tie it down right on the uh, my side of the hook lay it out of the way, get it locked down really good here, 
take my two millimeter foam that I've sharpied over with a, a black sharpie, lock it down right on top, and wrap my thread all the way back to the bend. And I'm not gonna wrap edge to edge because I wanna leave uh, some space in that foam so it still is holding air in it. I'm gonna wrap a base of thread on the front end of that hook so I have a good anchor point when I get the foam wrapped up. And I'm just gonna wrap this foam edge to edge all the way up to the front. And you can see it has a black and orange kind of variegated ribbed kind of look just like a natural salmon fly does. Lock that down. And now we have a good high floating foam body. Once I get that locked down, I just break it off instead of bothering with cutting it. Wrap all of it down. One of the things that I want to do right here is put enough thread on the front of this foam so it builds a nice taper instead of having a shoulder so that when I get my hackle up to the end and tie it off and then set the wing, the wing isn't just sitting up vertically. I'm gonna whip finish here so I can use my bobbin cradle and use the full rotary feature of this vise. And you wanna to try to make as many wraps as possible with this hackle. And I'm just gonna start going edge to edge. And I'm gonna to try to get around 20 wraps or so of hackle and just keep going. You can never have too many with this fly. So somewhere right in there, maybe one more for good measure. And I'm just gonna push that cradle right out of the way. Lock that hackle into place. Give it a little trim. And then one of the things that I'm gonna do is take my scissors and lay it down right on top and try to trim a little V out of that hackle so that wing has a place to lay down inside right there. I'm gonna take my Norm Woods dyed calf tail. And I'm gonna get a chunk about the size of, I don't know, maybe a half of a number two pencil. Do people still say that anymore? And I want this wing to extend uh, just beyond the bend of the hook. set it so it has kind of the longest part over the top so it has kind of a natural taper to it. Just get it just beyond the bend of the hook. Do my loose wrap to lock it in. Get it locked in really good. Looks like it's about the right length there. Trim this stuff off at a nice angle. And I'm just going to coat this whole thing to make that head. And just wrap it all so it becomes solid orange. Take my brown hackle. Strip that base of that off. Give it a little trim. I'm going to tie it on the front side of that hook on my side. Get it locked in. Get rid of that excess piece. Lock my thread right to the eye. And I'm going to try to get again as many wraps as possible with this hackle. And I want to be uh, somewhere around 8 or 10 if possible to
and that's eight wraps right there lock that into place get a couple wraps on either side of that hackle tip bust that off a little whip finish I like to do two whip finishes, just make sure that's really secure. Give it a little trim, and that's basically it right there. That's the Miffer, also my version of the Normwood Special. And that's kind of what it looks like on the front. And then the other thing I like to do when I'm going to fish it, you can see this hackle is all round. So I'm going to take my scissors and again lay them right on the inside and trim that inside out and get rid of that rounded part. So now this hackle is just going to have a V, flat V right down the middle. So when it lays down, it's going to be laying on that splayed out hackle. Enjoy.